Testing, testing. Looks like we just went live. Let's see if my sound is on. Testing, testing. Sounds good. Bay Area UG says, yo, what up? A uh, guy with a name I can't read says, fuck the AE map. You are right. Uh, Kadar Idris says, this will be a laugh. Anyway, we got to get to work because uh, over on the East Coast, it's three hours later. And uh, these biz you know, a business like NASA is probably going to close at like five or whatever. I don't know. So I'm thinking we need to get to work calling these numbers. And um, so what I did was I found a um, media contacts and information page. And I'm going to post this um, in the link after I get done with this stream. But uh, I not only found like a number to call and leave a message, but I found numbers for all sorts of different people at NASA. So I thought I'd just go down the list and just start dialing them up. Um, but you can see here, um, they have a media contacts information page for NASA, and they just have a bunch of different phone numbers. So I just thought we'd uh, start with the first one. And uh, here's the thing, I'm gonna complain. I'm going to complain with a bunch of different voices to make it entertaining as well. But you guys should be complaining too. And if we can get tens of thousands of people just calling NASA every day and, and bitching at them, you know, maybe somebody down there will eventually blow the whistle. Who knows? <laughs> like a real NASA whistleblower. Um, so let's just go ahead and start by calling the public inquiries line. I'm sure I'll get a uh, recording, but whatever. I don't care. 202 358 0001. 202 358 0001. Call a NASA right now and I'll put them on speaker, y'all. Thank you for calling NASA Public Communications Office for media inquiries and requests. Please call the NASA Newsroom at 202. 358 That's 202-358-1600. For all other inquiries, please leave a brief message regarding the nature of your call and include your name, telephone number, and email address. Please repeat your email address for accuracy. For up-to-date NASA news, visit NASA's website at www.nasa.gov. That's www.nasa.gov. Your interest in NASA is greatly appreciated. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Hello! Yeah, yeah, this is the flat earth asshole. I'm an American taxpayer, and I was just wondering why you guys have been stealing our money and faking space travel for, oh, several decades. Just one of those inquiries I had, you know, us public citizen taxpayers. We're starting to figure it out, lots of us that you guys have been faking us out and not actually going to space while stealing our money. I'd like to talk about it. Um, so if you could get in touch with me, my number is 1-111-111-111. And maybe another one in there. In fact, if you want to get a hold of me, just press 1 for a while. And when I answer, you will know I have pre you have pressed 1 enough. <laughs> all right so n nobody's gonna call me back from nasa of course so the object is to get somebody real on the phone of course um so let me try the nasa newsroom and see if anyone answers at the nasa newsroom okay so 202 -358 Operating hours are Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you've reached this message during the day, chances are we're helping other people. Please leave a message at the tone, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Yeah, are you really helping other people? Or are you guys just giving this message to anyone who calls? Hmm? 
do we just get a recording no matter when we call? Because it is office hours over there right now. I know it is between the office hours. So are you guys really busy? I mean, what are you doing down there? We know you're not actually going to space. We know you're not actually sending satellites to space or doing anything in outer space. So what the hell could you be doing that's making you busy? You should be able to talk to me right now. NASA newsroom. Please, you guys are too busy making up some fake shit probably. That's why you're not able to take my call. Well, guess what? I'm going to call back again. This is not the last time you will hear from me. Believe you, me, me, you. I will call you, me, again. All right, bye. <sighs> okay, so there's two numbers that I called so far, but there are plenty more. Plenty more. Interview requests. Ooh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Uh, interview requests for NASA acting administrator Gray Hatha to Taluma. I don't know. He's got a weird last name. But uh, anyway, I'm going to call the NASA acting administrator and see how that goes. Chances are it's going to be another voice recording. 302-358-0668. Here we go again, y'all. Let's, let's pray for somebody to answer. Shocker! I'm not able to take your call right now, but please leave me your number, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Hello there. My name is Jake, and I am an American taxpayer. Um, I was just wondering, um, since you are the acting administrator for NASA, I was just wondering why you guys have been lying and stealing our money. I mean, uh, if you guys were actually going to space, I wouldn't mind if you took some of my money from my taxes. But I found out you guys aren't even going to space. I, I noticed that, that when I watch the, the moon landing videos, that you never pan around back in a 360. Like, they never show the fourth wall as if they're in a studio or something. I, in fact, in all the spacewalks, I never see the astronauts just doing a 360 with their camera. It's becoming quite obvious that you guys are not only stealing our money, but you're just blatantly lying to the public. We're on to you, and your days are numbered, okay? All right, I'm going to call back again. All right, bye. <laughs> I got to change up the voices a little bit. I'm going to get bored just being myself. So I think I should try a variety of different voices. But you guys can do the same thing. And I'm going to leave uh, the, the link to all this media information. Of course, you can find it yourself. But I found a page where there's just a bunch of phone numbers. And I'm just going to keep going through and trying to call and see if I can get somebody. Chances are I will not. Um, let's see. Let's try to find another number. For all entertainment, commercial television, contact Bert Ulrich for staff support. Why not? We'll try this guy. Bert Ulrich. 
this is Bert Ulrich. You can leave a message after the beep, or better yet, you can email me at Bert, B-E-R-T dot U-L-R-I-C-H at NASA dot G-O-V for government. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Record your message at pound. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Hi, Bert. Yeah, my name is also Bert. And I saw what looked to be like bubbles coming out of astronauts' space suits during spacewalks. And I didn't know what the hell could possibly be going on, how bubbles was coming out of their suits. I thought water was coming up out their suits in space or something. But then when I looked into it, I found out they wasn't even in space, that them astronauts was underneath the water. And astronauts is underneath the water and bubbles is done coming out of their space seats. So why the hell you guys got astronauts in a big old swimming pool and then you're lying and covering it up with some CGI? I ain't stupid. I know y'all can use the CGI and the computers to make astronauts in the swimming pool look like they're in outer space. I can see the bubbles coming out of their space seats, okay? I'm going to tell all my friends. So you guys better cut that shit out. All right. This is Bert. And I'm telling you, Bert, we're on to you, buddy. All right. And you can email me at kissmyass at yahoo.com. All right. We're just going to continue. So we get a hold of somebody, but it's not looking like anyone answers their phone at the NASA headquarters. Ooh, headquarters public affairs office. That sounds like it would be a good number, the public affairs office. I mean, there's got to be people who have public affairs who need to get a hold of a real person, wouldn't you think? Let's give that a go. 202 358 5241. 202-358-5241. All right. Public affairs. for the Aeronautics Research Mission Directory. I'm currently away from my desk for on another call. Please leave your name and number after the beep and I'll return your call as soon as we can. Thank you and have a great day. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. You know, when I call the, the headquarters and public affairs department of NASA, I think it would be uh, wonderful if I could get a regular person, you know, a real person, flesh and blood, to talk to me. With the amount of money you guys take out of our tax dollars, what is it, 18 million a day or whatever it is? I, I'm probably wrong about that. You probably steal a lot more. But if you guys are going to steal our tax dollars, the least you could do is have somebody answer the fucking phone. Is that too much to ask at the public affairs division? Here is my public affair. You don't have anybody to answer any of your fucking phones. None of them. I'm going down the line trying to call anybody to get one of you guys on the line and none of you guys fucking answer. You always say you're on the other line. It's bullshit. And you know what? The American public knows NASA's full of shit and your days are numbered. We know you didn't go to the moon in a homeless tweaker shelter pile of shit aluminum can. All right? And we know you've been faking space travel ever since then. Your days are numbered, pal. So take this down while you're probably out having an affair with your mistress when you should be answering phone calls at the public affairs office. The flat earth asshole and the American public are on to you. And you're going down, assholes. You're going down holding your stupid blue painting. All right? Peace, bitch. All right? And we'll continue. As you can see, I was a little more mad on that one. You got to mix it up. Can't be cool and calm and collected on all the phone calls. Let's see. 
Diversity and Equal Opportunity, Catherine Brown. Well, she's got to be a good woman who actually sits there and answers her phone. If she's in the Diversity and Equal Opportunity division, she's got to be a good girl, right? Let's call her 202-358-1288. 202 Hello, this is Catherine Yeah, hello. My name is Jake. Um, I'm an American taxpayer. Um, you're actually the first person I've been able to get on the phone calling any NASA number. Um, so what, I, what I'm wondering is, uh, who can I talk to about NASA stealing our tax dollars uh, and faking space travel for the last several decades? You need to call the public inquiries line at your request because, and they are at, do you have a, do you have a? Yeah, um, yeah the pub, I have called the public inquiries line and they just let you leave a message and then nothing ever happens. I have a feeling all Americans who, who called voicing their displeasure just get some sort of uh, email, you know, sent their way, but we never actually get answers from anybody. You're the first live person I've been able to get on the phone. And so, did you did you know that the company you work for is stealing our tax dollars and faking space travel? Did you know that? I'm sorry that you've called us that. This is actually for education, and it's not a company, it's a federal agency. Yeah, yeah, NASA. See, I, I'm calling a contact on the NASA paid right so you work for the government right and what i'm That's telling you is is nasa faked going to the moon and they've, they've been faking space missions ever since it's all cgi and movie hollywood technology and they're stealing our tax dollars and since you work down there and you're one of the only people i can get on the phone i'm trying to figure out uh who i can talk to that's not a uh, a voice message or some pre-recorded line who's above your head because uh, I'm kind of a person that can make, uh, that can stir up a ton of shit. And a lot of Americans have figured out that space travel That's is bullshit. That's not really appropriate language to be using on the phone with me. I'm sorry, but I find this conversation very inappropriate and I don't appreciate being cursed at, so. I didn't curse at you. I, I said I, I could stir up shit. So yeah, she said I, I was using inappropriate, I said, cause I could stir up shit. I can stir up shit. She says, I don't, I don't like being cussed at. That's what would happen. See, that's the only lady I bet you could get on the phone out of all these numbers is at the diversity and equal opportunity. So if you guys want to continue calling Catherine Brown, I know she seems like a nice lady, but you got to get somebody on the line and you got to tell them what's going on, right? A bunch of people down there are idiots, right? Who believe the earth is a ball. They're not in on it. Like that lady, she believes the earth is a ball, probably had no idea about anything I was talking about. So the more people we can call and bother down there by the, not only the hundreds, but by the thousands, if flat earthers are called down there daily and bother these people, maybe they'll look into it. Maybe they'll realize that they are working for a fraud company, you know? If anything, we'll just make their day unpleasant. Like, okay, you wanna continue working for a company that does this even knowing so? then we're going to screw with you. <laughs> so we can continue. Hmm, who else? Who else could we try calling? Um, Planetary Exploration Division. Uh, heliophysics. We'll try that one. 202-358-1726. Hello. You reach Dwayne Brown in NASA Science Mission Directorate's Office of Communications. I'm sorry I can't take your call at this time, but leave your name, phone number, and a brief message, and I will return your call as soon as possible. Thank you. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options.
Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering why you guys have been lying this whole time and stealing our damn money. You guys have been stealing our damn money and lying to us for a long time. Ever since I was sitting there with my dad watching the moon landing, he's like, son, I'm going to tell you what. They ain't in no moon. They's in a studio right now. They ain't. Ain't nobody can walk on the moon because the moon ain't something nobody can walk on. Y'all trying to act like the moon's something somebody can walk on. It ain't something somebody can walk on. Y'all are lying about going to the moon and y'all are stealing our money and I'm tired of it. You sons of bitches. And us Americans, we're not stupid. We're figuring it out. More and more of us each day. Your day's numbered down there at NASA. You better start getting ready to get a new job. All right? Bye. I don't know why, but that's like my go-to oaky hillbilly voice. And somebody just said like cussing's immature. It's like, shut up. Like when you're mad, you cuss, okay? Anybody who follows my channel or watches my channel, I don't think you've figured it out by now, but I cuss. So people are like, why do you cuss? You should stop doing that. Like go watch someone who doesn't cuss. Go watch fucking... D Marble go hang out with Mark Sargent and Patty Cakes while he wears the fake map on his chest. I'm sure he won't cuss. Yeah, you'll be you'll have a wonderful time over there. Here, where we call NASA, where we call the people who are stealing our money, I get to say whatever the fuck I want, okay? And if I have them on the phone and my emotions get a hold of me and I say, fuck you, I have that option, okay? Because I'm a grown man and I'm mad. And this is my channel. And if you don't like it, Piss off. Steve, uh, uh, Renee says, uh, love live globe abortions, not cool to be a globe, globe tart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And thank you for the donation. Okay. All right, I'm going to make that guy go away because he's a pussy. John Leo. Yeah, but when you swear on the phone, it makes you look bad. <laughs> like, you act like that lady was going to continue sitting there and having a full-on conversation with me if I wouldn't have said the word shit. Little loser. I said I'm a person who can stir up shit. She was looking for a way to get out of the conversation at any point. It was just like 30 more seconds she was going to be out. So since I said I'm a person who can stir shit, I didn't tell her she was she was shit. I said I could stir shit. And then she goes, oh, I don't don't cuss at me. And then she ran away. So shut up, John Leo. You're blocked. And piss off all you losers who don't like what I'm doing. I think this is a cool idea. Shit. Man, and now you're distracting me. We're almost out of time before they close down, probably. I gotta keep calling people. Who else? Um Let's see. Uh, Ames Research Ames Research Center. Ooh, here's a good one. Armstrong Flight Research Center. Armstrong, like Neil Armstrong. Let's let's go with that. Armstrong Flight Research Center. Six six one. Six six one. Shit. What was it? Two seven six three four four nine. Armstrong Flight Center. That's Armstrong, this is Kim, I help you. Uh, yeah, is, is this um, research center named after Neil Armstrong? Yes, it is. Oh, well, I was just wondering why you guys would name it after, after a fraud and a liar who lies about stepping foot on the moon. We are, we are blind. We have uh, document evidence of being on the moon, so I, I can't convince everybody to put that. I'm sure, so you'll have to not believe that. Um, well, we well, the problem is, is they. We, we, we built a rocket. We sent them there. Um, we have proof of it, but there's never going to be enough proof for some people. So. Well, well, uh, my problem is, is you guys say you can't go back now because of the Van Allen radiation belt will fry the astronauts. Yeah. But somehow back in the 60s, you guys were able to make it through. We don't have the budget to go back. We 
and here we are trying to go back. You, you don't have the budget to go back? You guys take the money right out of our tax dollars, it, no, it, several millions a day. Ours is, ours is less than a cent of your tax dollar to for Aspen, and that's another portion of it just to go use for space exploration. We do other things like science discovery, aeronautics, you know, it's all not stuff going back to the moon. So we are doing that. We have to do it incrementally. But we have a very small budget to just go and, and do all these things quickly like we'd like, like, we'd like to. You have a, you know? So your budget is too small to go back to the moon, but it was big enough back in the in the 60s? Yes, it was back then because we were we had a uh, mission by the president back then. We don't have a mission by the president saying you will go back to the moon and we'll make sure you get enough money to do it. Oh, okay. So... But let me ask you this, because a lot of NASA officials say we can't go back because of the Van Allen radiation belt will fry the astronauts, and hopefully by 2020 we'll be able to figure out how to get through the Van Allen radiation belt. But what I don't understand is how did they get through the Van Allen radiation belt back in the 60s with something that looks more like a homeless tweaker shelter? Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, radiation is an issue, there's no question about it. Um, they didn't really understand it back then in the Apollo days. Um, they can get through the radiation belt, but it, it does, the protection for the astronauts is not where it needs to be, so that we don't have issues in long-term travel. That's one of our biggest obstacles, going to another planet, going to the moon. It's the radiation that will completely um, hit the spacecraft, therefore the astronaut. So there's a lot of things that are affecting you. Space is a very harsh environment. So oh. to protect the astronaut and the vehicle, we have to find ways to get to make the seat cushion them and, and blanket them from those kind of uh, I harsh radiation. I find what you just said highly interesting interesting that you said they were able to make it through it back then but they didn't they didn't know yeah. about it and see that was the yeah, answer that neil and buzz said was since they didn't know about the van allen radiation belt back then they were able to get through it because they didn't know about it so apparently if you don't know about deadly radiation then it can't kill you but now since we know about it we need more protection well, we're still on now. We did we knew something about it. We just didn't know how, how much it affected us. So we, we've been doing space now since the 60s. So we've learned a lot. And we found that just being on space station for a year, how much radiation does affect you. And there's a lot of things we're finding out by being on space station. This is a, an environment that's not very conducive to human life. So we have a lot to overcome to try to be able to, go, to explore it. Now, now speaking of the space station, now, now when I watch when I watch Scott Kelly, who was supposedly up there for over a year, um, yep. he, he appeared to be uh, in every TV interview uh, in in a harness uh, in front of a green screen. So why do you guys put astronauts in a harness in front of a green screen? Well, first of all, neither they're astronauts anymore. They both have left NASA. What they're doing now, I have no idea. They left NASA. They both have left NASA all together, so they're not astronauts. They're former astronauts. So well, I don't know where you're seeing that now. No, no, but when, but I know he came back now. But I'm saying um, it wasn't that long ago. Only like just last year, year before, he was doing TV interviews. You know, from the the ISS, and we could see him like bouncing in a harness with the wires taken out by CGI. And it, we could even see him crossing his arms, trying to block the harness. And so I'm just wondering why that were they faking him um, being inside I, I, there? I'm not, I'm not sure what you were looking at. I know that if you go to NASA TV, uh, you will see exactly what space station looks like, and exactly where he was. We show that all the time daily on NASA TV, and that's where he was at. Well, all the time. I know, but he he also did mainstream TV interviews, like he did the Colbert Show. And Stephen Colbert sat there and talked to him while he was on screen. And then at the very end, he does a backflip, and he clearly well, stops himself. I don't know anything about that. Well, what I'm saying is he he's clearly in a harness in front of a green screen. And, and I don't, I don't, I've never seen that, that before. I don't believe that's true, but I can't say I don't. I've never seen it, so I don't know what you're talking about. Well, since you work for this agency and uh, and you yeah. don't know, you should probably look into the fact that, that uh, they, they've been I, faking. I look into a lot of things, but we don't specialize on astronauts at this center. Uh, we're an aeronautical center. Uh, Johnson Space Center uh, has all the astronauts. I, I know, but 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 your 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 space center is named after a man who who lies about stepping foot on the moon. He was a he was a test pilot for X fifteen program before he became an astronaut. Yeah, but he didn't he didn't actually step foot on the moon, so he's a he's a known well, that's, liar. That's your opinion, okay? That's your opinion. You're allowed to have that. Well, I'm not going to be able to persuade you any other way. 
So that's fine. Um, I happen to know that he did, but you know, we named him because. No, you happen to know. Did. You happen to know that he did. How do how how do you know? We have, we have artifacts. We have footage. We have tons of uh, data that, that we went all the way to the moon on the side. You know, I, I can't even go into all the stuff. I don't even know all the, all the artifacts and stuff we have. Ar that we artifacts. The, the moon rocks have been proven to be frauds by many museums, even. Well, well I don't know. I, don't, I haven't seen any proof ever. You've um, never seen any proof ever. No, well, ma'am, you just haven't been true. looking. Yeah. Why don't you look at the original 1969 lunar module okay. and I just look at the original, the original 1969 lunar module and then just take a zoom in on it. It's held okay. together okay. with scotch okay. tape okay. and curtain okay. rods. Okay. It's okay. literally... It's literally held together with scotch tape, curtain rods, a black a black tarp, and tin foil. Yeah, if you go look at some sites that say that it is, I'll do the I'll do the same. Okay. I, I look at it on your site. I look at it on NASA's website. NASA that NASA's website is where I get my information. What was that? I absolutely do, and I look at the original 1969. Original 1969 lunar module that that Neil and Buzz supposedly were inside when they landed on the moon, and it's it looks literally like homeless people put this thing together. It's made of it's made of. The module did not land on the moon. First of all, the module never did. It's deposited on the lunar lander which ends up staying on it, which had the lunar uh, vehicle that was able to crawl on top, the uh, lunar lander vehicle. So I, the, I think you're getting uh, confused. The, the lunar thing. module absolutely did land on the moon. You're thinking well, of the... Totally the no, 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 ma'am. The lunar orbiter is the thing that, that took the lunar module to the moon, and then the lunar module came out and landed on the moon. This is, this is, this is what you guys say. And then, yeah. and then inside the lunar module was the little dune buggy that they pulled out and unfolded, supposedly. So, okay. so inside uh, the I lunar. Everything back in 1959. Like I said, I don't believe anything I say is going to make a difference. I would like to go work, watch some NASA TV, um, send something into public inquiries, NASA public inquiries, and to get your answers. But I, and there's nothing I can say all day on it. I talk to you all day, and you would not believe anything I said anyway. So. I'm not sure what you want me to do uh, in the meantime. I want you to research the lies being perpetrated by okay. by by the by the man who, who who's who's okay. building that you're working at is named after. I want okay. you to find out that that man is a liar. Uh, you can look on you know, to the other side that is true, and we'll, but then we'll I believed it my whole life, ma'am. I wish to God it was true. I wish to God it was true. I really do. Okay. And it was okay. it was the one of the worst right. things to find out was that you guys okay. have been lying about space travel. Okay, well, I, you're gonna move too late, so um, I think I've tried a lot enough to try to explain things to you, and it's not gonna work. So uh, I'll look at mine, you look at yours, and we'll go through. You're gonna believe what you want to believe. Okay, well, well, well. Good okay. luck, good luck to you, ma'am. Working at a, at, a, at a place named after a fraud and a liar, and okay. hopefully he admits okay. it before he dies. Okay, and and when he does, when he does admit it before he dies, you're gonna have to eat some crow, young lady. Oh shit, he did die, didn't he? The other one. <laughs> okay, the, when when Buzz dies, you're right. He already did die. When before Buzz dies, you got me there. <laughs> okay. Well, before Buzz dies, if he admits that they didn't go. Okay. Then, then, okay. then you're gonna have to you're gonna have to eat some crow, okay? Okay, well, all right, sounds good. I'm not worried about it. I'll take care now. All right, hey, you've been absolutely lovely. I'm glad you talked to me. Right. This won't, won't be the last time you hear from from people like me, though. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. Neil did die. It was. Uh, I started thinking about Buzz. It's like a. Uh, anyway, um, wow, that was fun. So, um, as you guys can see, you can get people on the phone. So, I'm not the only guy that can that can call them and give them shit, you know? I just thought it'd be fun to do on my channel. So, since you guys see uh, any one of us can call and complain, um, call and complain. If anything else, call and complain. 
You know, we can make YouTube videos bitching and complaining all day, but I just got in that lady's ear right there and took up some of her time and forced some conspiracy moon landing hoax into her ear, whether she wanted to hear it or not. So I think if we did that by the hundreds and by the thousands, if anything, it'll just irritate the shit out of them. You know, <laughs> if anything, I, I don't know. So you guys enjoying this so far? <laughs> what do you guys think? I just came up with this idea the other night. Me and my friend Mick were listening to uh, prank phone calls, um, like old school prank phone calls on YouTube. And it just, I, it just dawned on me that I could call NASA. And it wouldn't really be as, so much as a prank as just me seriously complaining and being mad. So you, you don't have to prank call them. You can just call them and be pissed off and just do what I did. You know, I mean, for added entertainment, I've thrown in a few like funny voices, but you know, um, I don't know if we're going to be able to beat that. That lady put up with me for quite a while. That was fun. Um, let's see from early Gemini, Apollo and Skylab projects to today's international space station in Orion programs. Um, the Johnson Space Center. We'll try the Johnson Space Center. 321867. 321867. 5111. All right, here we go, y'all. Not even gonna go to a, a machine? Huh. Okay. No Johnson Space Center, I guess. Or they're on to me. Um, Oh, well, let's see. Any other numbers I can call? Office of the Chief Technologist. Mm, we'll give her a try. Why not? 202 358 1160. Um, hi, uh, what, what branch is this that I called? Uh, you called, um, I'm the public affairs officer for the NASA technology mission director. Oh, okay. Perfect. Do yeah. Um, the wrong number? what's that? Do you have the wrong number? No, no. I said perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. Um, yeah, I'm an American taxpayer, and uh, me and uh, millions of American taxpayers are wondering why uh, you guys have been stealing our money and then lying about going to outer space. Well, I'm probably not the person that you should call. You should probably call your congressional. Probably call who? I do. I look like your congressional representative from your state. Congressional representative? I well, I just figured I'd call the agency that's been perpetrating these lies. I mean, for several decades now, since they faked going to the moon, NASA's been faking so outer I space missions. I am not the right person, and that's, 
I'm not the right person. Oh. I deal with the media. You're not the media. You're a text. You're oh. to call your Actually, I am the media. I'm with I'm with Modesto Thank News. You. I'm with ModestoNews.com, and I am a media person. Shit. <laughs> Uh, see, so even if you're just bored and you want to um, just pester the people who work down at NASA, this is a fun way to do it, if anything. I mean, <laughs> she's like, you need to go talk to your congressperson? Oh, yeah, yeah, go talk to my congressperson. Like, they're the ones responsible for NASA faking space, right? Don't call NASA. Go talk to some Congress guy. Uh, hi, Mary. This is, you're pretty cool, Jake. Oh, thank you. You're cool. Uh, I might be able to get in one or two more. I think they all start closing up at 5 o'clock, though. Um... Let's see. Planetary exploration heliophysics. Lori Cantillo at NASA's Office of Communications. I'm sorry I missed your call, but if you'll leave your name and number of the tone, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks, and have a great day. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Scott Kelly is a fucking liar. He's hanging around in a harness in front of a green screen. Well, that bald fucking liar's never been to space. You can see it written all over his blood red face. Yeah! There are no satellites in space. And NASA never went to the moon. There are no astronauts in space. But so you'd assume there is no ISS in space. And NASA never went to the moon. There are no astronauts in space. And NASA never went to the moon. <laughs> Uh, Flat Earth Tom says, shout out, Jake. Thanks for doing this. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate the donation, buddy. And no problem. It is fun for me to do. Um, let's see. Uh, what else can we call? Um, Earth Science. Steve Cole. 
They're lying straight to your face Because the earth is flat and there is no space They lie to control your mind If you can't wake up, then you sleep till you die There's proof that the earth is flat And once you go flat, you will never go back It's true, and we should hang him for the crime President Obama said we don't got time <laughs> oh man that was cool that i got at least a few people to actually answer the phone though Ooh, here's one jet propulsion laboratory maybe we can get them on the phone jet propulsion laboratory Eight one eight three five four fifty eleven. Jet Propulsion Laboratory. KTL Media Relations. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering, how does a rocket work in a vacuum of space? Isn't that impossible? Um, <laughs> you know what? This is not the center that handles rockets. Oh. Uh, yeah, you could try Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Uh, you could probably go on the website, too. What do you guys uh, handle? What, what's your, what, what we, department did I call? You called the center that puts uh, rovers on Mars. Oh, in orbit. oh, awesome. So what I'm wondering is, uh, is, um, it's pretty obvious that they're just driving around an RC cart, like out in the desert. So, uh, so it's, I mean, you're working for a company that that's, that's lying about sending a rover to Mars. It's an RC cart out in the desert. When I look at Mars with my telescope, <laughs> When I look at Mars with my telescope, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a red, orange, twinkly dot. And then you guys are acting yeah. like you sent an RC cart there. Come on. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, what do you think? Uh, I definitely think they're lying about space travel. You actually think oh, that yeah. you actually think that they sent that that little rover that looks like Johnny Five from Short Circuit, and in, and in, in that they're actually there. On that twinkly dot that that's called Mars. Yeah, it's a it, yeah, it's a really pretty twinkly dot, though. Yeah, it's a pretty twinkly dot, but when when we look at it with our telescopes, uh, we don't see this desert world with canyons and craters. We only see that with NASA images that have that have been made on a computer. You know, CGI. We see CGI images of Mars with canyons and craters and ice. But if you or I are to take a telescope and look at it, none of that shit's on there. Actually, you must have a really bad telescope. That's too bad. You need to put a little more money into your telescope. No, no, no. Uh, no, no. The, the average, the, a regular am amateur telescope, uh, even a decent one, it's just a reddish, orangish dot. It doesn't show any canyons or desert features. Those yeah, desert features... You're, still, you're, you're looking Walmart no, no, oh no, ma'am, no, ma'am. <laughs> I, I, anyway, you can go on our website. You can read some more stuff about what we do. Maybe someday you can work here. Maybe someday I can work okay. there. I wouldn't want to work for liars. They've been lying about space. Ooh, <laughs> she hung up. Dang, I thought she was gonna run with me for a while. She seemed like she was having fun. Said one day maybe you could work here. <laughs> And you guys know I, I don't I'm just doing this this off the cuffs, man. I don't have like uh planned out things to say or a script or anything. I'm just calling the numbers and and just letting it go. So, you know, we're gonna get lucky sometimes and get people on the phone who, who talk to me and then sometimes <laughs> they're just gonna hang up on me right away. You never know. Um Gee, I feel like I should try a few more. Stennis, Stennis Space Center. 228-688-3341. What was it? No, I forgot. Shit. Uh, 688-3341. 
Uh, Stennis Space Center. Nobody seen the earth as a ball. They painted it flat and they tricked you all. No man ever walked on the moon and nobody will anytime soon. Take a look at the cold hard flaps. Look at the horizon is always flat. Sea level. They don't say sea curve. Water clinging to a ball. You got some nerve. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think I said flaps. I said take a look at the cold hard flaps. That's what will happen when you're live. Look at the cold hard flex. <laughs> um, Marshall Space Flight Center, bringing people to space, bringing space to people. We are world leaders in access to space and the use of space for research and development and benefit of humanity. Marshall Space Flight Center. We'll give them a call. 256 Five four four zero zero three four. Make sure I dial that right. Five four four zero zero three four. Office of Communications, this is Belinda. Hmm, I want to make sure I got the right number. What what department did I call exactly? Office of Communications. For for which I, I Marshall Space Flight Center. Okay, that's I just wanted to make sure about that. Um yeah, um who can I talk to about uh, the uh, rocket thrusters not working in a vacuum? That that's that that's impossible. Um Because uh, apparently, yeah, rockets thrusters in a vacuum, yeah, that's like, it doesn't make sense. Rockets shouldn't be able to even thrust it in, space, in an infinite space vacuum. So basically, that means that NASA's been faking space travel for all these years and just trying to get to the bottom of it. Okay, let me give you a uh, call Molly Porter. Molly Porter? Mm-hmm. All right. Is two five six five four four two seven seven one two seven seven one. Yes. Okay. And did you know that NASA's been faking space travel for several decades? No, I don't believe so. You didn't know that? Yeah, you should check it out. They they lied about going to the moon, and uh, they've been lying ever since. They just use computers and CGI and movie effects to trick us nowadays. Okay, well, you, whatever. I know it's pretty crazy. You can actually see uh, uh, bubbles coming out of the uh, the spacesuits of the astronauts in different spacewalks, meaning they're in giant swimming pools, and then they're just going back with computers and and, and with CGI making them look like they're in outer space. Okay, maybe Miss Porter can help you. Maybe Miss Porter can help me. All right, well, okay. thank you, thank you for thank talking you. with me today. Bye bye, NASA lies. Bye bye. <laughs> well, I forgot the extension she told me. I was about to call the next lady and I totally forgot what the extension she told me. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, I probably got the best out of this that I'm going to get today. Um, I can always do it again. You know, this is one of those things that, you know, I'm sure they have different people um, that you could get a hold of if you try on different days. And then you could probably get a hold of the same people and just change up your voice, change up your question, and just keep 
keep nailing them day after day. So you guys saw what I just did, and uh, I'll leave the link um, in the uh, description. I haven't put it in there yet, but I'll leave the link for this media page so you guys can find it. And if you guys want to uh, call and voice your displeasure with NASA uh, or any of the other uh, space centers, you know, and research centers, uh, please do. Um, I mean, I think uh, it's important that people down there who are indoctrinated, you know, get told on a daily basis that they're working for a fraud company. I mean, if you heard that a thousand times a day, you know, that you're working for a lying fraudulent company and you kept hearing it over and over and over and over, who knows, maybe, maybe they'll look into it. Maybe we can get a real whistleblower to, to uh, step up and kick the lid off NASA. I don't know. Or if anything, it's just fun to, to call them. <laughs> oh, people have the phone number. I'll call it. I'll give it, give, give like one more go. Two, five, six, five, four, four, two, seven, seven, one. Molly. Hi, is this uh, Molly Porter? Yeah, this is Molly. Hi, I was told to contact you because um, apparently um, I looked into rocket propulsion in a vacuum and apparently it's impossible that for a rocket in a, in a, in a vacuum, infinite vacuum of outer space to thrust uh, and move anywhere. So. Between that impossibility and many others, I've come to the conclusion that, uh, that NASA's been faking space travel for several decades now, and I'm trying to get to the bottom of it if anybody down there that I can talk to in person is aware of this fact. Um, you're planning to come to um, Huntsville? Am I planning to what? You're planning to visit Huntsville and you'd like to talk with one of our, um, no, what I'm, what I'm, what, what I'm, uh, that could, that may be a possibility in the future. I, I'm with an al alternative news, uh, outlet and, uh, I have a pretty big subscriber base and, uh, me and several, uh, several million people have figured out that space travel is, is a fraud and our tax dollars are being stolen by NASA. Uh, us Americans, of course, having our tax dollars stolen by NASA for fraudulent space travel and other space agencies worldwide are, are following suit and doing the same thing um, in a collective joint effort to trick the world into believing that outer space is a place we can travel to and go to when there is no such thing. I'm not clear on what you're asking me for. I'm just wondering if you are aware of that. Are you aware that, that NASA's been faking space travel for the last several decades? I'm aware that there's there are theories floating around that um, cast doubt on NASA's activities, but um, Yeah, for, for, for instance, uh, we, we can see bubbles coming out of the astronauts' spacesuits during spacewalks. And then at the, at the training center, we're told that they, that they train inside of a swimming pool. So when we see bubbles come out of their spacesuits while they're supposedly in outer space, it, it's not uh, too far of a leap to put two and two together and realize that they're in the swimming pool. Uh, and then they're using CGI uh, and computer special effects to make them appear to be in outer space. Interesting. And where do you think the funds are being diverted to? Where do I think? Uh, to Black Ops Projects. Um, 
silent weapons to be used on the public. Um, uh, direct uh, laser technology that can be shot from planes. Uh, for instance, there were some wildfires started here in California where businesses were burnt to the ground. Meanwhile, there were trees all around these businesses that were left standing. So weapons like this, these direct energy weapons, uh, this, is, uh, this is more where the, the money would probably go to. Maybe uh, the, so the spraying of the uh, chemicals in the sky. Have you ever noticed there's, there's trails in the sky, lines in the sky, after, left by airplanes? I have, or you're, you're speaking of the, um, what people are referring to as the chemtrail conspiracy. Yeah, you know, uh, that's another thing that, that money could be funneled into, is, is spraying the public w with chemicals. I mean, it, it's, it doesn't take, uh, it doesn't take a, an unintelligent person to figure, uh, to figure this out, or intelligent person, excuse me, to figure this out. Uh, you, you can look up in the sky and see clouds um, that, that come out of an airplane, like a, a, a trail. You guys want us to think it's clouds, but it's, they stay there all day and they don't dissipate. Whereas uh, another airplane flying by making a contrail will disappear immediately. So if I see an airplane fly by and its contrail disappears uh, within a second or two, and then another airplane flies by and leaves a trail that spreads out and hazes out the sky, and then I look up and there's a grid pattern up in, up in, the, in the clouds, um, it's pretty, pretty obvious that something's being sprayed above our heads. So... so um all of the people who, like eyewitnesses and um, to the Apollo launches down at the Cape, um, what, what, what do you say to them? Okay, the people who watched the rocket take off, is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, if you ever watch a rocket take off, it'll go up and then it'll turn sideways and then it will leave your view like an airplane. It'll just leave your view going sideways. You won't actually get to see it go to outer space. It'll just fly away from your view. So what they say is that the, have, the reason have, that they do that is to catch terminal velocity, that they have to go around the Earth to catch terminal velocity and then exit because they say they can't go straight up and punch through and, and go to outer space by going straight up. So they say they have to turn sideways and go around the earth to get fast enough to leave. So basically they leave your view and you don't get to see them go to space. They just get to tell you that they went. Um, I, I will say, no, NASA is real. We have landed astronauts on the moon. I've watched the series of films, they call them the Apollo engineering films that go from the ground to the moon and um, not just the moon landing tapes, um, actually the, the engineering films from cameras mounted on the outside of the Apollo well, that's interesting. Well, how did they get through the Van Allen radiation belt? Because I'm, we're told that we can't go back to the moon now because we can't figure out how to get through the Van Allen radiation belt, which supposedly will fry the astronauts inside. So how did we get through the Van Allen radiation belt back in the 60s if we can't go back now? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not as... Um... My area is not rocket science. I'm the, um, the public affairs officer for the science and technology directorate. Um, well, you were saying you know NASA's real, so I'm I'm just giving you I'm just giving you some uh, some 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 seed really some seeds that I'm going to plant in your brain that you're not going to be able to quite forget about. Hopefully, that's my goal. I want you to know that, that space travel is, is fake. Uh, space may be the final frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement. <laughs> and uh, they've, been faking, they've been faking us out for, for, for several decades, long before I was born. 
And uh, all you have to do is just take a look at the lunar module that they supposedly landed on the moon in. And the thing looks like a homeless tweaker shelter. It really does. It looked like some homeless guys from around my neighborhood concocted a little shelter for themselves. That's what it looks like they land, that they supposedly landed on the moon in the lunar module. And um, for them to get through this deadly radiation belt back in the 60s, but now in 2017 claim that we can't go to the moon now because there's this radiation that we can't figure out how to get through. Don't you find that kind of kind of funny that we were able to get through it in the 60s with a, with something that is made of aluminum foil and construction paper, but we weren't able to get through it now? I feel like you're messing with me. You feel like I'm messing with you? I do, yes. No, I'm actually not it's messing with joke. you. What? It seems like a joke. It seems like a joke, and I wish it was. I believe my whole life that space travel was real until about uh, three years ago, no, two and a half years ago or so, I figured out it was fake, and it, they've been lying to us the whole time and using basically movie technology. Like when you watch the movie Gravity, you see Sandra and, uh, and, um, and what's his face, <laughs> you know, uh, Clooney, uh, George Clooney and Sandra Bullock, you see them floating around looking like they're in outer space. They're using that same technology to fake us out today and tell us that they're out there floating around in space when it's when NASA. So me, what I, your, your basic point is telling me that I'm lying to you. You, you personally are unknowingly lying to me. I can tell that you actually believe in space travel, so you're not going along with the lie. You're just indoctrinated into this belief, as I was and as most people are. We're taught that, that space is real and that the Earth is a ball out there in outer space. But let me ask you something. Can you feel the Earth spinning right now? Seriously, can you feel the Earth spinning right now? Um, let me, can I take your name and your phone number and get the news outlet that you're working with and, um, Absolutely. I just have just, just these two questions and they're just really fast yes or no questions. Can you feel the earth spinning right now? Well, I don't, I mean, no, but I, the answer is no, you, you're correct. The answer is no. And the reason okay. is, the reason is, is because reality, the earth does, reality is not, the reason reality is, ma'am, is because the not. earth doesn't spin. <laughs> and you know what else? I'll bet you've never seen curvature either. You've only seen the earth curving in a photo or in a, or on a video screen. You've never seen the earth as a ball from outer space with your own eyes. You just have to ex assume that's what it looks I've never like. Been to space. So when you see a picture of the Earth as a ball, colleague. so when you see the, a picture of the Earth as a ball, that's a point of view you've never seen and you never will see. So you have to trust the government organization NASA that that's where what your world looks like. What if that's yeah, just I a think painting? I'm, I think I'm I'm sharp enough to know when to trust and when to be skeptical. You're sharp enough to know that. Well, obviously not because because you don't even know that the, that the moon landing was a hoax. So I'm trying to help you out here. The the earth as a ball well, is is a thank painting. You for thinking of me. The earth as a ball um, is a painting. If you go look at any earth photo from space, they all look different. The continents are in different places, different sizes, the color of the water changes. It's because they're all made on a computer. Or they're painted back in the day, or it's or it's a photo that they that they manipulated into looking like a ball. Ever since the the camera was invented, they've been making trick fake photos. And nowadays, you, with computers, they just use CGI to make fake pictures of the Earth and to show fake fake you space missions. Your, ask your name and your news outlet. And get my, yes, my name is Jake Gibson, and my news outlet. It's called Flat Earth Asshole, and no, that isn't a joke. 
I have 24,000 subscribers on YouTube and they're watching me talk to you right now. How did you get my name? I went through um, the NASA contact list uh, and then there were some different uh, research uh, space agencies and all just, just different numbers trying to get people on the phone to uh, tell them about the fraud that's been going on uh, perpetuated by the by the government. Uh, and I'm basically just trying to get a hold of anybody involved with space and complain. Um, because millions of Americans and uh, several million people worldwide have figured out that space travel is fake and that our tax dollars are being stolen and our minds are being manipulated and played with. And uh, we're tired of it. So we need to well, we need yeah, to do something like about your it. Mind is made up, and I'm glad I could entertain you and your viewers. And um, well, you can be glad you're yeah, entertaining us. But what I what I'm telling you is, these phone calls will become more frequent in the future, not only to you but to your associates. And I got your your phone number from one of your associates. And um, it won't be long um, before before many people start calling these NASA numbers, not only by the hundreds, but by the thousands, to complain about what I just told you, that space travel is absolutely fake. And uh, all you have to do is look into it. And look into the flat Earth, and you'll find out why it's fake. The Earth is flat and motionless, just like just like your senses tell you. You can't feel the earth spinning because it doesn't spin. You can't see any curvature because there isn't any. The earth is flat and motionless. And the biggest lie perpetrated on us, on us as humans is lying to us about the world we live in and what's really going on. And it seems like you're connected to the agency, NASA, who perpetrates this fraud. Correct? I work for NASA. I'm a public affairs officer at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. And um, thanks for having me on your show. And I'll talk to you later. Okay, you you've been sweet, but but seriously, look into it. The Earth is flat, and NASA lies. So nobody ever went to the moon. All right. I disagree. <laughs> oh, oh you you won't if you look into it. You'll wish you could talk to me again. In fact, you'll want to get in touch with the flat earth asshole once your mind pops. Like once you figure this out, you'll want to talk to me so bad. You'll be like, man, I want to call that one guy who told me how it was before I knew how it was. You will. You will so want to talk to me. Interesting. You will. And you know what? I'll be there for you, girl. I will be there for you. I will talk to you when you need to hear my voice again. Okay? Um, can you just let me know who gave you my number? Um, it was one of your workers. One of my workers? Yeah, one of your workers beneath you or somebody. I don't know. Somebody just gave yeah. me your, your extension. I've been doing this just, you know, for the last few hours, calling people at NASA and letting them know that they're, li that they're lying down there. Because I know that you low-level yeah. workers don't know. I'm allowed to call anyone I want and broadcast it. Without the these these num these numbers are are are, are these numbers are, are are available to the public. So if I'm a YouTuber and I say, "Hey, here's NASA's page. It's NASA's actual page with all these numbers. Give them a call." You know, uh, they don't have to do it, and there's no law being broken by me telling people to call NASA and complain. I'm calling to complain is all I want to do here. And I have a forum where I can tell others to call and complain. And I'm, I'm small potatoes. Just wait until somebody with millions and millions of subscribers decides to do this. <laughs> That's when things will be really funny. But anyway, you're going to eventually, you're going to eventually, you're, you're, you seem, you, no, it's not about humor. I use humor to get the truth across. That's what I'm good at. So it's not about humor. If you think I'm doing this as, as a pure joke, you're wrong. No, I NASA absolutely lies about, about everything. NASA lies about everything. And so I'm just trying to get in touch with any sort of real human being who's affiliated with them and tell them 
that you're working with a lying, fraudulent organization who steals money from the public and fakes going to space. Fakes all of it. It's so damn fake you wouldn't believe it. And now that I've told you, you have the ability to go look into what I've told you. And if you do, it'll hit you so hard and it'll change your whole life. You won't ever be the same person again. Or you can just <laughs> take the blue pill and act as if this crazy guy never told you any of this crazy stuff. Hello? Isn't there a law against recording people with Without their permission. Not if you work for a government agency. You guys, isn't there a law against recording us? You guys record us, don't you? Aren't we under constant surveillance by the government? Isn't the government listening to every single thing we do after 9 11? Hmm. Oh, there's another funny thing 9 11. You knock down some buildings and then suddenly you get to spy on all of us Americans. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I'll bet you don't even, I'll bet you think that 9-11 was done by some foreigners with box cutters who ran some airplanes into some buildings, right? When in reality, we knocked down those buildings <laughs> and there were no airplanes whacking into them. The airplanes only exist on a TV screen. So ever since that day, we get to be recorded by the government. Seems like she's holding me on the line because she wants to record me. <laughs> no, I'll just look you up. You'll just look me up? No, I just did, and I'm, this is like a big joke. And I'm not at NASA headquarters. No, but I've been calling people at, at NASA headquarters. It's not a big joke. This is for, this is for real. Uh, on my page, you'll find uh, several different uh, proofs that NASA's lying. In fact, my page is a great place to start. I actually have a video dedicated to the lunar module, the thing they supposedly landed on the moon in, and that it's absolutely a, a pile of trash. It's, it's tinfoil, it's uh, construction paper, curtain rods. And yeah, I've got plenty of videos right here on my page that'll prove basically all of what I'm talking about. It's not a joke. All right, well, take care. Have a good <laughs> all, night. all right. Well, when you're ready, when you're ready to talk to me again, uh, you have my number probably because you know you work for the government. So. Uh, flat Earth asshole loves you, all right? The Earth is flat and, and NASA lies. And I'm just looking out for you. I'm not trying to, to screw with you or waste your time. I'm trying to help you, okay? Bye. Flat Earth asshole loves you, baby. Bye-bye. <laughs> Uh, Flatter Tom says genius. Thanks, Flatter Tom. I appreciate the donation, homie. Well, I don't think we can get any better than that. I think we've had about as much fun as we could possibly have with that today. So, uh, man, she put up with me for a while. And then she's like, isn't there some sort of law against them, against taping people without their permission? <laughs> it's like, yeah, but... Ever since, you know, those airplanes hit those buildings on 9-11, we've been getting spied on and taped without our permission, right? <sighs> oh, man. So, you guys enjoy that? Looks like you did. What the hell happened to all my mods? Did my mods get booted again? <laughs> I don't see any of my mods anywhere. So you guys have, have her number and all the other numbers, and you know where to find these numbers, and I'll leave it in the link after I'm done with this video. 
But uh, yeah, um, spy. Um, I was about to say spy on NASA. No, uh, complain to NASA. Just call up and complain. I mean, why not? We can sit here and bitch on YouTube all we want, or we can physically call people and get them on the phone and get in their ear and tell them that they work for a fraud company. You know what? It's got to bother them eventually. It's got to, maybe they'll look into it. You know what I mean? Could you imagine being told a hundred times a day you work for a fraud line company? Look into the flat earth. I bet if they hear that every single day, they're going to be like, all right, well, I'm going to go check this out when I get home one of these days. Who knows? Uh, anyway, I had a lot of fun here. Looks like uh, I built up some good viewers. Um, the restriction is now off of the Flat Earth Asshole uh, channel to do uh, live streams again, obviously. Um, I made that, that uh, video uh, three months back about Charlottesville um, car hoax attack, and they gave me a community guideline strike, so I wasn't able to stream on this channel for three months, and the strike wore off, and here I am, I'm back, so I'll be doing streams uh, here more often. And I'll still run streams over on Flat Earth Association channel um, maybe once a week. I'm thinking I'll start maybe a regular show over there and run streams on both channels. I don't know. Anyway, uh, thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I had a lot of fun. And um, you guys can make videos and do the same thing I did. And uh, Or even if you don't want to make a video, just call them up and complain. Let's just get in their ear and, and, uh, and voice our displeasure. And uh, that was uh, the goal of today's video, and I think we did that. So anyway, you guys have a good day, and I'm going to sign off. Peace. Flat Earth Asshole. Out. so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video presentation if you did please subscribe to my youtube channel like the video and share it on your favorite social media sites there's a lot more to come so stay tuned and we'll see you back next time